Hey everybody, RevTech here. And today I want to share a prayer and a hope with you. I pray that we never have to commemorate a Juneteenth event ever again. Now wait, I need you to hold on with me and not click away. No, I'm not saying that we should not celebrate Juneteenth, please. My wife is from Texas and I need you to just hold on with me for a second. Just put on your futurist classes and focus with me for a moment. What if the horrors of slavery reoccurred, but this time not on Earth, but on the moon or on Mars or on a space station or on an asteroid or somewhere in the deepest parts of space, someplace far from communication, a place that took weeks or months even to travel to, and a place where it took hours or days for a single message to travel one way? Could the communication failures of the past that initiated and caused a Juneteenth event happen again, but this time in our interplanetary future? How do we ensure that human rights and freedoms persist, particularly across vast distances in space? Imagine a future where human rights are jeopardized, not just on Earth, but across the cosmos. This is not some kind of comic book science fiction I'm talking about. This is present science fact right now. So stay with me as we explore this crucial topic by way of a reflection through the history of Juneteenth. All right, trust me on this. You have to hang around for the call to action because I'm going to suggest something I don't think anyone has ever mentioned before. I know it sounds crazy in the life of YouTube, but I really think so. But first, let's rewind and start with the brief history of Juneteenth. Well, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued in 1863, but its enforcement was delayed, leading to the need for military intervention in several southern states, not just Texas, actually. On June 19, 1865, two and a half years later, freedom finally reached Galveston, Texas, but not before thousands of lives were impacted by the delay. And get this, Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia and Arkansas, please, please don't ever say Arkansas, and Florida and Tennessee and both Carolinas were not freed up until time around this as well. So it's, Texas just happened to be the furthest one away. The Union troops had to actually traverse through all the Southern states to make the proclamation real for all of the slaves. Now imagine the impact of such delays on an interplanetary scale, where communication might take weeks or even months, and enforcement by a government or a union just as long as in the case of the Juneteenth could take even longer. This is, this is, this is where we're going with this. Travel and work has changed. We've moved from local societies to an intra slash intercontinental economy to now a global economy. But have you considered how now we're beginning to enter enter an interplanetary era? Yes, interplanetary. With plans to colonize the moon and Mars, our future is rapidly expanding beyond planet Earth. Elon Musk aims to establish a colony of 1 million people on Mars by 2050, a vision that includes building a fleet of 1,000 starships. Around six have already been created and tested. The final version is hinted at being released last month, which means that it could show up pretty much any day now. Each of these starships can carry around 100 people, and the goal is to launch three flights every 26 months starting in 2026. That's a year and a half from now. And if you think that's unrealistic, remember when we thought it was impossible to have a rocket booster go up into space with the ship and come back down to its launch pad and land perfectly vertical upright in a space the size of your living room? Well, that's all happened. So what happens when messages of hope and faith are missing from colonists isolated so far away? Or what happens when communication between these distant colonies and Earth begins to fail? Or when corporations that are too focused on profit violate human rights? How do we ensure that freedoms and safety are sustained? Well, during a visit to a small island off the coast of Kodiak, Alaska, I saw firsthand how fragile our connections can be. These islands that I visited were used by the U.S. Army during World War II, and this one in particular had electricity running through a cable that, is, that stretched across a huge bay. I thought about what would happen if that cable were cut. There's already no internet and some parts of the island have no cell service, but coupled with no power and limited communication, the isolation could be overwhelming. Or how about when I just happened to be hanging out in a rare glacier lake with freezing rains and icebergs chewing in the water and the only sign of life being that random black bear and mountain goat you for sure can't see in this picture on the screen. 
with no internet or cellular connection, my mind just goes, what if, what if? Well, these experiences are not unique to the places I'm visiting. I'm sure you can think of many places in your own mind's eye, but they do remind me of how critical persistent communication is, especially as we expand into space. Without reliable communication, we risk repeating the failures of the past on a much larger scale. Let me just restate it again. Persistent communication is vital. Imagine a situation where Mars colony faces a crisis and due to the vast distance, it takes minutes or even hours for messages to travel back and forth to Earth. Delayed decisions would cost lives. We have to create robust communication systems that can handle these distances and ensure timely responses. So RevTech, that makes a lot of sense, but churches and organizations are not communications or engineering firms. So what does outer space have to do with ministry and service? Well, hold on to your britches, chill out, and take a dip from the cold pool because that's exactly where we're going and what we're about to talk about right now. The mission of nonprofits and churches becomes even more critical as we expand into space. What happens to our visions, our missions, and even our commissions of faith and hope and love and even justice when we are separated by great distances and asynchronous communications? Okay, that's basically communication that's delayed and not real time. Christianity experienced this during the diaspora of AD 70 upon the destruction of the temple and the great persecution. Letter upon letter in the New Testament are written to people who are exiles in the diaspora and foreign countries trying to figure out who they are and what they believe in a new land. Conversations abound about people leaving churches and membership organizations, about shrinking churches and organizations struggling to stay alive, Conversations about church survival and organizational growth and church growth and cultural engagement and theological and doctrinal fundamentals, they have blown up all on this side of the moon over years and years and years. How many more questions and debates and, dare I say, even fights may grow in the context of folks traveling beyond the planet? Personally, I'm thinking about how will I pass on my Christian values, my family values, and my family histories to my children if they eventually make their way into space. I'm actually talking to my son, who's in the 10th grade now, about joining the Space Force and literally in his lifetime, becoming one of the first people to fly in outer space. I'm thinking who will be the moral and ethical voices in new lands without governments run by corporations and businesses? How do we ensure that our way of life and civilization doesn't turn into something out of Gattaca or Jupiter ascending or Warhammer or, or an evil republic empire like something out of Star Wars. It's, it's ha-ha, but it's also really scary um, in a very real way. It's crazy, but with spaceships preparing to travel away from the Earth in less than two years to explore new frontiers and find new resources and inhabit new places that we have never lived before, doesn't this smell very much like we're repeating history when our former ancestors traveled to a new American frontier to explore, to find new resources, and to ultimately inhabit places they'd never been before? Huh? Yes, this isn't science fiction. This is science fact. So I wanted to say this was a call to action, but it's really what I think is a call to challenge. Some folks will think that I'm crazy here, but you need to listen to these, especially point number three, because it's going to blow your mind. So the first thing I think we have to do as nonprofits and churches is to interrogate the past. You know the quote, those who forget history are destined to repeat it. Yes, it can be painful, but let's look back and learn and move positively forward. It's hard. I know it is. But I believe we can do this, and I believe America is uniquely poised for this. But you'll have to wait for the Independence Day video that I'm working on to learn more about that one. Anyway, our history is not perfect. Look, we've got Juneteenth that we're talking about right now. But there are things that we can celebrate, and I definitely don't want us to throw out the American baby with the bathwater. The second thing, I believe in moral and ethical injunction. Churches and nonprofits are the holders of the moral and ethical keys, and I don't want to give that up. I started this channel because I want to be a Christian faith voice in the world of AI and future technology. Our voices must be in the planning and the execution and the implementation of settling beyond the stars. And particularly for Americans who live under the reality of religious freedom, I don't want us to lose that freedom. So somebody has to be in the room where it happens. 
where the sausage is made. I'll have some links in the description for real live organizations that you can research and consider joining to be a moral and ethical voice in this space. See what I just did there, the, the whole space plan. Number three. So here's the craziest but realest thing that you may have heard all year long. I want us, I want our organizations and our churches to take seriously the need to seed the stars with our mission. Yes, I am saying that churches and nonprofits should start thinking now about what it looks like to expand our presence beyond planet Earth. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but church planning on another planet is really real, and we should begin thinking about it right now. Someone's going to say that this is proselytizing. I, I don't think so. I think that it's who we are as churches and nonprofits. We have visions, and we have missions, and we even have commissions for a purpose. And whether it's through a church service, a community meeting, the internet, legislative policy, theological statements, books, social media posts, and yes, even YouTube videos like this right here, we have a message and a purpose to share. And if a spaceship is leaving in two years, what voices will be heard when that ship lands on a new planet? As we wrap things up, let me reshare what I said at the very start. My prayer is that we never have to commemorate a Juneteenth event ever again. Never, ever, ever. Achieving this requires us to boldly go where no church organization or Christian has gone before. We must be pioneers in this new frontier, ensuring that human rights and freedoms are built, yes, across the cosmos. Join me on this trek, and together we can create a future where everyone's rights are protected no matter the distance. Rough check out.